Ready for this, ready for this, ready for this, ready for this, ready for this. Let's go. No clue what I'm doing. another episode from Comes and Caught Screws. I'm back in the kitchen today as you can see and we're going to be doing something a little bit different in terms of how I do the video. Instead of seeing it top down and you just seeing my hands, I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you all the steps of me baking um, and see what happens first. I've already done first but today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a Bailey's cupcakes. Now these are one of my favourites that I used to make in the shop and I haven't made them in like forever and when I say forever I mean forever because it's at least five years since I last made them so in my terms that's forever. I was in Home Bargains the other week and I stumbled across these and these are Bailey's chocolate sticks. I like the little ice cream wafer rolls. So for today yep we have Bailey's cupcakes and we're going to fill them with a Bailey's chocolate ganache a bit like these are and we're going to ice them with a Bailey's frosting and the cake is going to be a really nice chocolatey sponge. So I'm using the Gorilla Pod because my um, <laughs> tripod is broken, the top has worn away on its thread and it keeps falling off so I'm on the lookout for a really decent tripod so if anyone has any recommendations hit that down below in the comments as well, I'd really love to know you but as you can see from behind me this is my kitchen. Uh, first up we need to make the Bailey's chocolate ganache so we can let it cool before we then fill our cupcakes with it later. Over a low heat I have 80 mils of double or heavy cream, 100 milliliters of Bailey's in it goes and I'm just going to heat that until it's warm. What I'm going to do is pour it over this which is 150 50 grams of dark chocolate and the heat from this is going to melt the chocolate. I've uh, gently heated the cream and the Bailey's together until it was just about boiling. Don't boil it because you'll catch the cream and then what I've done is I've poured it straight on top of the chocolate in here. I'm not going to tip it too far and it's, uh, it'll start to melt the chocolate and just gently stir it until that's all melted through and oh my god it smells so good. By the time we get round to filling our cakes it should be nice and um, cool for us to work with. Chocolatey Bailey's warming goodness. I suppose I should show you what we're uh, making and uh, it looks like this. Oh my god that was so quick. Perfect in the centre of our cupcakes. So we've got that there like that. Right, so while that's chilling, we need to get down and make our cakes. I'm melting some chocolate again. Um, I've got 50 grams of chocolate in there over a simmering pan of water. That's going into the cake mix. I have no microwave. This whole where the pumpkin is, is where my microwave should sit, but I've gone through it three in 12 months and I'm not allowed another one for the moment because <laughs> I keep blowing them up. Going into here we have 200 grams of soft butter. I leave my butter out overnight. It uh, makes it a little bit softer and a little bit easier to use especially when it comes to frostings. Into that I'm also going to add 200 grams of white custard sugar. Uh, I should be using a soft light brown or even maybe a dark brown uh, muscovado, but I forgot to go shopping. So in that case, and I'm gonna whack here. I'm gonna put in a dribble of double cream rather than milk just to help everything combine uh, nice and smooth. And I'm gonna beat this on high until the butter and the sugar are pale and fluffy and nice and creamy. Oh, let's go! Helps if you turn the plug on first. Don't forget if you're doing this by a stand mixer or even with a hand mixer to stop it and give it a scrape down every now and then. If you're doing this with a an old-fashioned hand whisk beater, well done. 
So the butter and the sugar have came together and uh, this sort of colour, so it's sort of a pale yellowy colour and I've given the bowl a good scrape down and got that ready uh, for the next stage which is eggs. We need a three of these. These are medium size eggs. These are definitely free red and organic because they came from my fabulous colleagues chickens. And I'm gonna put three of these into a jug. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to mix them all, whisk them all together with a fork and then gradually add it into our mix as we uh, have it on low again. I should have done this while it was mixing. When they're all mixed together, whack that back down, put it on a low speed, and gradually add these. Once they're all in, keep going, and then whisk it on a little bit higher until you get a nice pale, yellowy, fluffy liquid. I'm going to show you what this looks like, because it just looks like a yellow custody mixture, a bit eggy maybe um, but next thing is to add our dry ingredients 200 grams of self raising flour 50 grams of cocoa powder this is all sieved and just pulled it through I'm gonna pop it back on this uh, and you can with your hand mixer but I know that if I put it in before I started to combine it we're just gonna get a big of flour and cocoa butter a bit the same like when you do icing sugar and then you're finding it for weeks days years i swear my car has still got like edible glitter in it from um, when i had the shop every now and then it sparks in the sunlight i started to combine that all in the mixture and i'm going to pop that back on here but in here with this, I'm gonna add uh, the remainder of my wet ingredient. I've got 50 grams of melted chocolate. I'm not very good at this bit. This is the left and it looks me. A drizzle or a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm using vanilla bean paste, so I don't want too much. Coffee brings the, um, the chocolatey flavor out, I think, this one. I'm gonna add a shot of Bailey's, 25 mils. To mix this through until it forms a really nice cake batter. So what we can do is scrape this all down and then get it into our cupcake cases. Look in, mixture, like that. Next you want a, a cupcake tin, this is a deep one, and obviously some cupcake cases go in. I'm going with some Yes, this is so warm, because that was what was in the cupboard. Frosty ice cream scoop, and I know I've mentioned about it as a product before on the blog. And that's one of these. This one is broken. I'm gonna fill them with one scoop, which is about three quarters full. No, I'm not, because it doesn't come out. I'm gonna fill them with about two scoops of this. One of these is more than enough and this one um, is from Lakeland. This is such a, a nice, moussey-like batter. I'd say it makes 12, but you might get more than that out of it. So that's my, um, that's my cocoa pan filled, and I've still got enough for probably about three in here, so I'm just gonna grab a, another cake tray. I've got another three out of that mixture, so this entire recipe made 15. Uh, they're going in the oven now. 170 for about 15 to 18 minutes. <laughs> this gorilla pod and I are going to fall out. Uh, the cakes are in the oven. I'm going to get tidied up. We'll get the frosting made. I'm going to start our frosting and it's just a basic buttercream frosting. So what you haven't seen is I've got 250 grams of cube softened butter in here. I'm going to cream the butter up first, add half of the ice and sugar, do like I did with the flour earlier and mix it a little bit together by hand before then mixing it with the hand mixer and then finish off the last amount and adding the Baileys in as well. 
So I've creamed up my 250 grams of butter. Don't forget to scrape it down off the sides. Adding my icing sugar. Um, I want about 500 grams. It's always temperamental. So what I do is I weigh out my first 250. I'm gonna mix it again. At this point, if you want, you can add a drop of milk to help soften everything and combine. You only want to drop too much and then make it runny. After our first addition of icing sugar, you're gonna get a really yellowy, uh, buttery, sugary mixture. That's, we've added 250, we need to add another 250 grams. The cake's about to finish. They had like 10 seconds. Come on! Like 10 seconds forever. There, let me check. Da, da, da. I can't actually begin to tell you how amazing these smell. Beautiful, really beautiful cupcakes, apart from the one that had a fit when I put it in the tin. I'm gonna finish off frosting whilst these cool. Right, so back to this. This is our frosting as is. What we now need to do is add the baileys and give it one last mix. A shot of the Irish cream liqueur. Others are available, of course, not sponsored. That smells of uh, and our frosting is all made, so the next thing we need to do is ice them. First of all, we need not only a frosting, you need a piping bag. Or if you are using a bag, this is a uh, sort of a star nozzle, and that's what I'm going to be using for our swirl. Just poking out the end like that. Stand it in a glass or something to help it. You can get collapsible plastic things, but I can guarantee you've probably got a load of stuff in the cupboard. You know, like the kids' tall plastic beakers that you get when you go to places? Those, they're perfect. Don't spend £10 on a collapsible piece of something. And I'm just going to scoop <laughs> one thing I've forgotten before we ice them is we need to put the ganache in the middle. <laughs> get this into those and the two ways that I can do it is either using an apple corer and um, coring it down the center of the cupcakes or you can use a melon baller or you could use a sharp knife or the tip of a piping nozzle into it this one I'm gonna use a la apple corer so let's do that um, and you might want to save that Put it back on or you can taste it wine so good <laughs> i've cored all of these out um with the apple corer and um now i need to fill it with the ganache a teaspoon and pop it don't worry if uh the ganache doesn't all fit in the hole and it sticks out on top like this because you're going to be piping the buttercream around it also, you'll find that you've probably got enough ganache to do all of these and have some spare. So you can keep it in the fridge and um, spread it on toast, cake, uh, add it to any other bakes or make it into truffles. So the next thing we need to do is to frost these bad boys with the buttercream which we've already put in the piping bag. Let's go. So in here, I've got my buttercream frosting and I'm going to pipe it just in a swirl around my top. Whilst I was finished off piping these in, came in and um, finished off the scrapings of the buttercream in the mixing bowl and said it tastes really good. So we are iced and filled with ganache. I'm just gonna sprinkle those on top. I'm going with these. They're quite long, so I don't want a great big thing sticking out. So what you can do is just break it in half and give it a little ears. And they're done. Let me tell you. They smell amazing. If I could give you the smell uh, via this, then you'd say they're amazing. But you have to trust me, and you're gonna have to make your own. The look at these. These are our Baileys cupcakes filled with chocolate ganache. I'm gonna um, chop into well, this one that I've kept all by itself. But in there, that bit there, is where the ganache is. Chocolate cake is as light as a feather. The frosting is creamy with a hit, just a really nice hit of the Baileys. And the ganache, 
the richness in that canache just brings it all together. Oh my god. <laughs> you are just gonna have to make them for yourself. I promise. Look, I'm I'm gonna go and, and demolish that now with um fresh cup of tea i'm gonna get them off on the bog straight away because you know what my pinterest is going on nuts uh recipes at the moment we have had so many hits it's been incredible old school christmas tree meringues the uh peppermint pinwheel cookies my biscotti my my marshmallows my gingerbread reindeer they're all up there they're all going nuts on Pinterest. I will drop links down below, but don't forget you can hit up the blog. You can find all of them up there. I've linked to them on the homepage. If you've got any questions or any tips for using a Gorilla Pod or any tripod recommendations, or if you want to see more of this style, or if there's any particular recipe you want me to have a go at, then drop me a link in the comments below. And don't forget, subscribe and then you will get a notification every time I post a new video. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week, and if you do give this a go, let me know. In the meantime, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. So, uh, me and this Gorilla Pod uh, really don't like each other. Uh, no, it's not. That's not gonna work. <laughs>